Arcade, or would you hear for every three Argus Desert Gates Blue Team? 4400 with a Chaos Sorcerer Offensive and Disruptive Hero with awesome Battlefield Manipulation and the ability to generally cause chaos, which is handy for Chaos Space Marine. We've got the Thousand Suns shoulder pad badge here in red, I suppose. Alongside Simon2504 is a war boss, melee hero that can walk through objects, very good offense, disruption and support from the front lines. This is the Blood Axes Elite Scheme with the fancy caps. Rounding off the blue team is Drollcat as a warlock. Melee spellcaster that can leap into combat with some powerful disruption, support and offense. Red team start, starting off with Matthias as a force commander, very good offense, fights in melee combat, can also tank, disrupt and support with buffs. Everyone's favorite ultramarines on the east side up against that warlock. Alongside here, Thorkart is a Lord General. Fight range combat begins with his retinue of stormtroopers to help him out. Very strong defense and support can add to this retinue without the game giving him more abilities. We've got Bright Pink and Shiny Green Imperial Guard over here. I'm sure the Inquisition is fine with this, guys. Don't worry. And rather than us off, Pontius Glow with a Plague Champion starts off range combat with a damage of a time bolter. Can get melee weapons, some decent utility and support can build turrets and repair, but it's very slow. And this is the Death Guard Elite Scheme you saw there. 4400 committed his heretics too soon and too hastily they get forced off very easily that should mean that Pontius Glow takes this engagement it's very handy of course to have a melee hero to send into marines early on but it's not going to be enough to sway this engagement the plague champion does well early to try and be defensive try and hold his heretics back so tempting to send them in and doom blast the hell out of stuff but sometimes you've got to be patient Eldar I've pushed through the east side so that scouts got shut up by the Dire Avengers and Banshees were allowed to roam free. Did the Marines lose a model? I can't actually... Oh, they're in the garrison over here. That could be bad to try and retreat through. The war boss has gone down in the mid. Grenade goes out. They now will retreat and should be okay. Even if the Banshees get them get on them fully. They're not going to take two models, I don't think. Oh, Sentinel goes down mid. Yes, it did. And I think it had the ground pound upgrade. So a big misplay there for... Thorcart, despite taking down the war boss, because guardsmen can go forward and cap. War boss was repurchased, as you saw there. Here comes 4400 to try and defend the power with some aspiring champion heretics. Where's the sorcerer, though? Should have waited for the sorcerer, I think, before this, because he could have set this push up with a nice doom bolts. Heretics get in there, but there's too much stuff here for them to deal with. I did do take a marine out. These marines, with their eternal war upgrade, doing 20% more damage. In both melee and ranged combat, too much for a single squad of heretics to handle, even with some CSM support there. Doombolts flies out, but it's not a full cast of it. If he has 100 energy, he should throw out more of the Doombolts. Though it doesn't always seem to happen from what I've seen in replays, and it might be just that he doesn't quite have the full 100. So sees him off quite easily there. The CSM were forced off, but now can do a little bit of bashing, not the most powerful power bashing force there you've got guardsmen with flamers for Thorcart does hasn't got anything else up yet heavy weapon squad maybe up on this east side what does Matthias have well, Matthias has some devastators need to set up on those banshees this could be devastating for those ladies they're gonna get away now need to switch targets to that warlock grenades might come in there's one good hit but damage evenly distributed and they don't drop a model there, but they're going to be pretty low for the next fight. Units, living units do have health regen, but it's generally, generally not enough to heal you up between fights. Warboss on the prowl on the west side, helping out 4400, who now has some raptors. A good choice, I suppose, against Pontius. Oh, he's got triple CSM now. Can work. A bunch, like triple, even quadruple marines can work in a 3v3 when you've got other players supporting you but you maybe need to communicate that to your team because they're going to need to deal with anti-vehicle and that kind of thing and jump troops maybe but as a plague champion does have a lot of melee counter initiation with aspiring champion heretics and a melee plague champion yep we got a plague sword on the way so those triple csm upgraded could be absolutely devastating to enemy infantry we'll see how they do with Storm Boys and Raptors on the field though. Can Pontius deal with the melee in his face? That is the question now. Does he have an Aspiring Champion for the Heretics? Does. 
So has the Plague Sword, has the Aspiring Champion, also of course has access to the Touch of Nurgle. Not yet, doesn't have the red for it yet, but this is a dicey fight. Raptors jumping in, Stormboys jumping in, Stormboys with power melee weapons, and Ponty has stayed in this fight way, way too long, I think. Look at that though, killed two Raptors with the sword, and got two Raptor zombies here. Didn't jump them, but um, I mean, killed some stuff. It was a messy fight for sure. Lost, wow, lost six Chaos Marines. That's a lot of requisition here. I think they are 66 to reinforce. Yes, they are. So that's a fair amount of requisition to reinforce all those guys. Should have got out way sooner when he was double jump there. And of course, he needs to try and not bunch up his Marines so much. It's going to be tough though. It's not easy to do. Seems easy. Just give them different orders, right? But um, generally you want them to, firing, to be firing on the same target so they end up in the same place. We got some scout shotguns on the east side for Matthias. Rangers now for Droll Cat. Looks like Simon is a little bit depleted. Just did two shooter boys and an angry war boss. He's always angry though. Now he's got angry bits. Even more angry. He's going to let you know that he's angry by charging into your face and getting some health regen. Shotgun blast on the Banshees. Devastator is getting caught though. Could have kept them in play, I think, if he was a bit, bit more mindful of how he was dealing with those Banshees there. Scouts stayed a bit too close, a bit too long. Generally, you want to get them in there, shotgun blast, and move them back a little bit. You need to be close for the shotguns to fire, of course, but um, you don't want them right on the front. Try, if you can, to get your Marines between your enemy and your Scouts in general. Not always practical with the shotguns. Especially when there's a Warlock jumping around. He's got half of his XP bar. What about this Force Commander? Also halfway to level 2 with Artificer Armor. Has a 2 plus save now. What is it? Like 200 hit points? Yeah. And some more health regen. And some energy. Pretty good piece of war gear. Which is why it's purchased like 80% of the time I would say. Catachins on the field for Thorkart. Very versatile infantry. Can get into melee with some power melee weapons. Can disrupt and support. We'll see how they do here. Raptors jumping in. Could be a bad jump. Double CSM and Catachins here. The suppression really messed up the guys, but now they're getting stuck in. Warboss is there to support. Raptors did some work. Drew some fire, but can the Orcs capitalize? I don't think they can. There's too much stuff here. Where was the rest of 4,400 stuff? Yeah, he's, uh, he's sending his things in a bit too quickly. A bit too over-eager with his Raptors there. Maybe he thought the Orc could do some more work for him. Sword of Flame is up. Catachin has just used their smoke smoke grenade, it seems, to give some defensive buffs. Mostly range damage reduction and suppression immunity. Also breaks current suppression, I think. Banshee is doing some work. War Shout does not affect the scouts there. Not quite close enough. I'm not sure if the War Shout emanates from each model evenly or if it only emanates from one. It's not always easy to tell what's going to be affected by it. Maybe it should be changed so that it does emanate from each model a bit more easier to predict. Dire Avengers capping while the Force Commander tears through some Banshees here. Bad fight to stay in on, ladies. What are you up to? They do get away. Maybe could have got another model with another swing there, the Force Commander on retreat. But goes in on the Dire Avengers. Going to cap. Bravely cap. Yes, they are. There we go. Now you can run away and nodes it too. Going to be annoying for Matthias. Triple CSM still going. We have a Death Dread on the field for Simon. Melee Walker for the Orcs. Can get the Burners and Bits upgrade. Giving it two Burners to fire and also some more hit points. Generally, you'll see it get it. Aspiring Champion for Raptors with that Power Fist and Melter Pistol. Awesome squad leader. Matthias could do with some help. Webway Gate goes up and this thing is shrouded in infiltration, I should say. So the Scouts, no, they can't see it. They don't have their Sergeant. Not going to be able to detect it very easily over there, Matthias, which could lead to his power being bashed at least one more time before he realises, or before his team realises. I guess if Thorkart brings the Catechins over there, they'll spot it. Also, these Aspiring Champion Heretics would spot it. Drollcat looking pretty strong here, with Banshees, Rangers, and now a Wraith Lord on the field. Alongside a Weird Boy could set up some good pushes from the um, 
two Walker vehicles here. We have an aspiring champion for 4400 CSM. Now getting Mark of Corn is going into some melee here. Sorcerer with the Robes of Torment. Can lock down these triple CSM in place, I suppose. Do some nasty things with melee CSM and the Raptors. There's a the jump. Doom bolts flying in. Devastating opening on those guardsmen might have to run away we see some buffs here from the lord general flapjacket is up for incoming that's that blue buff that you see there death dread marches in smack doing some heavy melee damage with some good splash and a big aoe on it it seems especially on his special attack his special attack has massive radius east side we have a dreadnought for matthias in its default melee state right now Plasma Cannon also in play. Going to set up on this side. And a Nurgle Shrine. Might see a big fight on this east side. Here comes the Death Dread. Weird Boy's got a bit too close to this Dreadnought, I think. Wanted to get his Warp Vomit stun. Rangers getting shots in. This could be a very important fight here at the start of Tier 2. Blood Letters. Circle of summoning from the sorcerer. Down goes the war boss. Dreadnought taking on a Death Dread, a Wraith Lord, and a Power Claw war boss there. Can he get away though? Needs some help here. Chaos Dreadnought helping out. He's forcing close combat to make sure it stays in range and also gets those melee attacks in whenever it can. Smack. Warp throw. Chucking some chaos stuff around there from the warlock. Let's keep an eye out on this Dreadnought though to see if it lives. Scout's trying to repair. Looks like it's going to be okay. Well played from Matthias. They're going to get this Dreadnought, this Death Dread down. Thanks to the Chaos Dread. Can they get the Wraith Lord down? There is a last cannon in play, but the Wraith Lord is chasing it. Warp. The Weird Boy. Weird Boy goes down. Going to say War Boss there. Can this last cannon set up? It's now reinforcing and healing off that shrine because it's being worshipped. It allows you to reinforce. Here we go. It's going to set up. I think this Wraith Lord is done for. And here comes a Power Fist Force Commander too. Gives you the Flesh Over Steel. As well as just generally good DPS against all targets. Yep. They're going to lose the Wraith Lord. A good fight then for the red team. Blue team got in a little bit too deep. Couldn't quite support those vehicles. As they went chasing after the Dreadnought there. And that comes with experience. Knowing when to chase, knowing when not to. In a three in a 3v3, it can be particularly hard to judge because you can just get flanked an instant. Down goes the Chaos Dreadnought. Well played. The Stormtroopers there. That was 4400's Chaos Dreadnought. Pontius is still fine. And the Plague Champion is down. He's level 2. Oh, Manticore Strike. Just on the Chaos Sorcerers. Really didn't want him capping this. This is the Manticore here. Powerful artillery piece. You have to manually target each shot. Has a big cooldown. But when it hits, it really hits. So blue team are seen off the east side. They should push forward and bash it. Leaving the cap to the fast capping tactical marines. And now they're bash, or at least try to. Pretty effectively, I would say, with a dreadnought, a force commander, and two CSM. But Pontius not wanting to push up and hit some gens there. West side is very blue. Although, red team's power is safer now. 4400 going for another Dreadnought. We've got tank buses for Simon as he goes tier 2. Tier 3, sorry. And of course, lost that weird boy and lost that death dread in tier 2. War boss is also down. So more guards went up for Thorcart to help him repair stuff. And to help him repair his allies stuff maybe. Because this Dreadnought is still getting repairs. Force Commander levels to 3. We'll be doing more and more damage with that Power Fist as he levels up, of course. I believe at level 10, a hero will do around about 33% more melee damage. So, quite a freaking lot if you can get them up there. Here we go. Raptors in there fighting a Plague Sword, Plague Champion. That weapon ignores melee resistance. For those that don't know, melee resistance is a 40% resist against melee attacks that a lot of units have. Generally all melee units will have it, will have it. Also heroes will have it and 
some other stuff, tactical marines and that kind of thing. Guardsmen don't, the poor, poor fella's not very good for melee. Heretics here not worshipping the shrine. It'll still heal you up, but it means you can't reinforce. And here's a rocks from Simon. Pretty good place for it. Took down the shrine, I feel like he should have had more stuff here before he used it. To mop up a bit. Maybe get some tier 3 units up before you use that rocks. But I mean it did some work. Got the stuff off the field and facilitates the cap. So I guess it was. It was some good usage. Might take down the force squad if it's not careful here. It's a lot of dacker. It's a lot of dacker. Goes down. Goes down. 359 to 272. On the VP's red team though. Pushing through the mid. Some tax here. We've got some sparkly guardsmen. And we have a Lord General with retinue fellas. We've got the Commissar, the Medical fella, and now the Vox Operator on the way. is going to have a full retinue with tons of ability to try and juggle with his 130 energy to use there. Each new retinue member gives you an ability. The Vox Operator allows you to call in reinforcements, which is pretty handy when you're dropping models left and right. That guy got way too far up the field though, not sure what he was trying to do there. Got the decap, and there is a Katachun explosive over there. Maybe could have been used. CSM with those power melee chain axes getting stuck in. Get some more hit points off the Mark of Corn as well. Wow, Manzigor gets a couple of good hits, three good hits. Almost wiped out those CSM. And the Raptors too, Raptors even got lower. Keeps them in play. Some good old blob cap in. Dreadnought here to defend. Red team trying to get back this east side. They should be able to with a Dreadnought here. It's got the assault cannon. Massive amounts of piercing DPS. Plague Champ is now level 3. Has the armor of pestilence. Making him even slower. But hella tough. West side is still very blue. But they're not hitting that power over there. Should be... I think 4400 should be going over there, maybe with the quick the quick CSM and smacking that power around, getting some free XP. See a council for Drollcat getting in, almost wiping out a last cannon devastated team in a flash there, these guys with power melee weapons and the ability to jump in. And that jump, that leap does damage, I believe. Are they gonna die here immediately? After I said how great they are. Wow, Plague Champion getting two zombies Seer Council with a special attack there. And they do take them down. Very sloppy from Drollcat, you got to say. Does have a Fire Prism in play. Man, if he still had that Seer Council, it would have been a pretty fearsome Tier 3 loadout. We have a Knob Squad here for Simon. The War Boss is still down from when he was fighting that Dreadnought, I think. 352 to 258. Knob squad getting knocked over. These guys are fearsome in melee combat. And take on entire armies almost when you don't have the disruption to knock them over. Here are some Terminators. And um, Matthias maybe should have gone for Assault Terminators to get Lightning Claws to fight these knobs. As it stands, the Knob squad will tear through them when they only have Power Fists. I say only have Power Fists. Like power fists are bad melee weapons, but um, against a knob squad, you want your lightning claws. 347, 252, power bashing on the east side. Still nice and peaceful over here. 4400 should be putting more pressure on this, or at least someone should be. He's lost his CSM there. Now getting some heretics up to repair his dreadnought. More seer council from Drollcat. Red team in the ascendancy here. With a 2 to 1 cap and superior armies on the field, you have to say, even though there is a knob squad, which is a massive equalizer here. Warboss also back on his feet so he can buff them with um, Calder Boys and that kind of thing. Or at least reinforce them. Got his Power Claw, got his Angry Bits, no armor upgrade for that guy. Might see him with heavy armor, giving him 900 more hit points, taking him pretty close to 2000 already. At just level 2 here. Cyclone Missile Launcher getting some shots on the Fire Prism. I hear a turret or something. Yep. Plague Champion can build turrets for some reason. Still not sure why why he was given this ability by the developers, but hey. 
he can make a turret. Starts off as a heavy bolter turret, can turn it into a las cannon turret. A las cannon turret is devastating against vehicles, much like the Tech Marines missile turret. Both of those anti-vehicle variants are pretty crazy. Seer Council getting in using the gate, and that's a devastating Eldritch Storm. Wow. Was of course buffed back up a little bit in 2.8. And did some work there. Blue team pushing alongside it. Red team is still not figured out that there's a webway over there. Chains of Torment going down on the Terminators. Nothing really there to follow it up. Fracism's getting very close to things. Dreadnought needs to turn and engage it, but it's not doing so. It's shooting kind of not very effectively out of the war boss here. Okay, champion must flee. War boss trying to get the last hit, but can't quite do so. I think he's going to survive. The Dreadnought does not survive. And blue team pushing through. Now I've got some flash gits for Simon. With these... Snaz guns, I think they're called, which is a pretty cool name for a weapon. Here's that full of retinue Lord General. I wish there were more retinue heroes. It's a pretty cool idea. Maybe an Inquisitor for the Auto, Auto Malice or something. That'd be pretty cool. We have a Bane Blade on the way for Thorkart. We know how well those things always do in a team game. They never immediately die or anything. We have a Marco Zinch Dreadnought, which is going to be bad news for that Bane Blade. I don't think you should get a Bane Blade when there's a Nob Squad on the field. When you don't have surefire ways of dealing with those guys. They don't have a Melee Dreadnought. They have some... I mean, what do they have? They have Catechins to knock them over. Scout Shotguns to knock them over. That's pretty much it. I guess the Plague Champion can get stuck in with his Plague Sword and the Force Commander to try and use Battle Cry to disrupt them. But those knobs are going to do some work, you would think. Maybe the Bane Blade will pay off. Maybe they can just support it with just enough stuff for it to do so. It did get some changes in 2.8. It now costs 100 requisition more, which is not very much, but does more damage on its main weapon. I believe 30 more per shot. From 150 to 180, I think it went. Red team capping now. Full 12 guards on the squad. They will be reinforcing three at a time. Raptors are still in it. Level 4. They've done well. Land Red Redeemer on the way for Matthias. Here's the Bane Blade. Where's he going to take it? Takes it mid. Might want some more Guardsmen to repair it. He's only got one. And they are over on the west side right now. The Lord Reynolds cannot repair. It'd be cool if he could get, the, uh, get some kind of retinue to help him repair and support vehicles maybe. That'd be pretty fun. Oh, they took the webway out. Well done, fellas. Land Raider Phobos on the way for 4,400. The big guns literally are coming out all around here. A D cannon also up here for a drug pack. East side is uncapped. We could see a mammoth engagement here. Bane Blade is still mid though. Might push the mid with it. 205216. There is a Imperial Abyss from Pontius. Wow. Did some stuff too. Took out the flash kits. And the knob squad retreat right through it. Which kills a couple of models I think. That was painful. Terminator is actually being pulled into it. But they are okay. They survived somehow. Those guys must have took a hell of a lot of damage though. Down goes the dreadnought. The fire prism getting a shot from way way out there. Blasters now up on the flash kits. The blasters look awesome. Doing some... Big bursts of AoE damage. Does have a chance to knock back the flash kits, which is pretty fun. I believe it's a 10% chance, but they often fall back into the other models, which is not great for them. Here's the Land Raider. Kind of like a mobile base with a bunch of guns on it, which is pretty handy. Can retreat back to that thing. Bane Blade edging up the mid. Might see the knobs going after it next fight. No, they're going back to the east side. 205 each on the VPs. It's evened up. Manticore still in play. What level are you? Level 2. Now he's getting the Storm Eagle upgrade, making the missiles do more damage, but also extending the cooldown duration a little bit more. So less shots, but they're more powerful. 
Chaos Terminator is barely getting away without a model loss there. Might want another shrine up, although they are getting healed off the Land Raider Redeemer. Some serious heresy going on. Baneblade getting into a fight. Taking some shots from a Phobos, but that's a Manticore right on top of that thing. Two of them hit. The other two shots were put behind it, I guess. He figured it would be pulled back, but it actually wasn't. Baneblade got a big shot on it, but not enough to finish it off. That was a Vox Operator reinforcement calling, I think. I thought it was calling a bunker in. Here comes the Nob Squad. Use your choppers on them. Is the Baneblade going to survive here? Tank Buster's also weighing in. The War Boss, of course, getting hits. And the Baneblade is going to go down. He pushed it way, way too far up. We see this time and time again. Players just not being careful enough with their Bane Blades. Just not being careful enough. With a knob squad on the field, pushing it that far up is kind of madness. Land Raider needs a lot of repairs. This one is also getting some. Much more healthy though. 205177. Nobody can really hold this east side for any length of time. We have double D cannons, which I'm sure has something to do with it. That's a singularity. The scouts ducked inside the land red to avoid being pulled in. There is a shrine here too. Blue, yeah, blue team needs to be pushing the mid. Don't go east when there's a land raider sitting there and a shrine. Make the red team think about where they're going to put their land raider. More flash kits on the way for Simon. Doesn't have a whole lot else. Just some flash kits and some kind of beat up knobs. Although they only lost one model. War boss level 6 now with heavy armor. Very, very close to 2,000 hit points on that guy. Which is a lot. Devastators for Matthias. Always a good late game choice in a 3v3. See a council lurking. Maybe he can get another shrine over uh, Another webway, I should say, over here. Droll cat. Red team flanking outwards to the east side. Raptors getting a good jump, though. Oh, but they have their melter guns. There was no suppression on landing there. Why are you jumping into these guys with melter guns, fellas? Maybe he, maybe he thought they still retained the suppression on landing. But they don't. Melter guns takes that away. Quite rightly, too. Because melter guns on a jump squad and the melter bomb, let's not forget, is uh, pretty good. It doesn't actually tell you here that you get a melter bomb. But I'm pretty sure you do. Unless I'm going crazy. Eastside uncapped then, still. They need to try. And it's not going to be easy, but this Land Raider needs to die. Droll Cat, do you have a nuke? Very nearly have a nuke. Simon does. If they have some communication here, hit it with an Eldritch and a Rocks and push in. It's not going to last too much longer. One to uncap. Red team pushing. Oh, wow. Big shot there from the D cannon. Mincing up some poor little guardsmen. Calling in some more reinforcements. Oh, no. Calls in a Lehman Russ. There's some reinforcement for you. Blue team need to counter push, and they do so. Those guys... As you can see, not retreating back to the Land Raider. You need to set the Land Raider as your retreat point to be able to use it as such. There's the Eldritch and there's the Rocks. The Rocks not focused on the Land Raider, it seems. But did some good work. Where are the knobs? Are they off the field? No, they're here. The Dreadnought is getting some shots on the Land Raider. Knob Squad are off the field. Warp was trying to get close to it. Surely they're going to take it down. It's so close, 23 hit points. Flesh over steel shuts down the Dreadnought for now. Can they finish it off here? War boss is trying to get in. Boom. Down it goes. Land Raiders do not have a rear armor penalty, but that swing was still enough to deal with it. A level 8 war boss now. Wow, this guy's pretty fearsome. Good job, says Drollcat. 169 to 157 on the VPs. Blue team. 
I guess. Maybe you can get... Or maybe not. There's still a tank here. There's still a bunch of Terminators here. And there's still a shrine to heal this stuff. Looks like blue team will maybe get it though. That VP. Raptors jumping in. Yeah, they, they have the Melter Bomb Decorator. They must get one. Should really tell you that on this upgrade here. 163157. Uh, the note here where it says more vulnerable to melee damage must refer to them losing melee resistance. One to one cap. Nobody can get this east side. The looted tank there driving into a hell of a lot of trouble goes down. All of the action on this east side. Phobos now coming back into play having been repaired for ages. Those last cannons big, taking big chunks out of those terminators there. Big chunks. Sorcerer getting stuck in with the Sword of Flame. Is that a rocket run or a creeping barrage? It's a creeping barrage from the Lord General. Not much of a threat to the land raider, but it's still getting a bit too close. Keep it back. Keep this thing back. You want to keep a vehicle like this at maximum range at all times if you can. Some more Chaos Terminators hitting the field, did they? Or did they just teleport in? I think they just hit the field. Trying to get their Power Fist to bear on the Land Raider here. Yeah, this Land Raider's done for, I think. We've got Auto Cannon on these fellas. Power Fist all over the place. Down it goes. Down it goes. Not a good day for Land Raiders. Not a good day for big vehicles. Does he still have two D cannons? Only one D cannon now for Drogcat. We have an Avatar. And the Seer Council. Heavy turret drop, but it's going to go down pretty quickly. Red Team just unable to stabilize after those double nukes and push. I mean, you can't blame them. It's hard to recover from that kind of thing. Three Chaos Terminators on the field for Pontius. Oh, sorry, that's two. Either one just died or it was a bugged, a bugged display there. I think it was just a messed up display. Red team have the east side. 2-1 two, two on cap, 160 to 136. Still very close and we have another Land Raider Redeemer. And why not, right? I think you'd still get another one up. I think you would. Just need to be way more careful with it. For instance, not getting too close to the war boss. Multimelter doing some work though, of course. The twin link to Silk Cannon is pretty damn effective too. Down it goes. Sloppy play there from Simon. Why why keep the war boss in that long? Or what are these flash kits doing? What is he up to? Wah, wow, says Simon. Very orky strategy of just throwing things to die, I suppose. Nobs did get away. War boss is level 10. Almost 2300 hit points on that guy. It's almost the same amount of hit points as the uh, Terminator Force Commander with a far superior armor type. Since the Terminator Force Commander goes to heavy infantry armor for some reason. 154 to 119. Not a lot of Seer Council can do here by themselves. Terminator is trying to cap, are they? Maybe. I think they got shoved around by the land raider there. Here comes a great unclean one to join the party. Just a cast of characters joining constantly to get stuck in. So like Matthias is getting some lag here. Computers can struggle in Donable 2 when there's lots of terrain scarring like this. Can really tank your performance. Let's try mid, says Simon. I think that's a good plan. A surprisingly good plan for an orc. Great King 1 basically just took a bunch of damage and backed off. Yeah, there's a heavy turret, a Lehman Rust, Terminators for days, and a Land Raider. And more Terminators, this time the Assault variety. Yeah, the amount of stuff the Red Team have been able to get on the field, Blue Team really have messed up, not hitting this power at all. They've had tunnel vision going after the east side and sometimes the mid. you still got to keep pressure on the power if you can. And I think they have had the opportunity to do that. Just haven't done so. 154 to 101. One to one cap here on the VPs and Orcs pushing mid. Looks like alone for right now. 
Oh, we have an avatar supporting him, and that guy will buff the orcs. You see this blue buff circle getting buffed by the Seer Council and the avatar. So they're not alone. Webway Gate was there. Uh oh, but now they're getting a natural decapped by a Force Commander, level 6 Force Commander, with a teleporter pack. Those Doom Bolts won't be much of a threat to him. But all of this stuff will, and now it's turning around. Can the Warlock knock him off the cap here? That nope, uses Battle Cry to make sure he doesn't get knocked over, but it's. He needs to retreat anyway. So it's probably better off not using it there and saving it for when he actually needed it. 154 to 87. Red team sweeping up the east side. We need to be mindful of the mid though. Fake champion trying to get it back. There's a singularity to toss him around. And something else here can come and cap again, I suppose. Red team pouring into the middle now to contest their natural VP. Coming in from what could be an awkward angle for the blue team. D cannon has turned, but they need to be careful. Yeah, trying to back up and get in behind the red team here. Don't want to be caught between two forces if you can. Those guardsmen barely getting away. There's a rocks. And I think, was that a warp throw going off there or something? Orbital bombardment all kicking off here. 154 to 83. Some orcs getting caught. They should be okay. Raptors also getting caught. And they, they also survived being level 4 and stuff. Some noxious clouds going on. Still the 2 1 cap. Red team not taking a natural back quite yet. Blue team did a decent job. They did a decent job. Getting hit by that much stuff and an orbital going off. It's hard to stay in play. Just not sure if they can consistently hold a point with the amount of powerful stuff the red team have. I mean, hey, the blue team have powerful stuff too. They've got a very clean one. They've got knobs. They've got Seer Council and Avatar. Red team just seem to be supporting each other a little bit better and putting it together a little bit better. The Salt Terminator is getting their claws on, which is bad news for the knob squads. Avatar's not going to get away either. Look at that. Force Commander getting the cap. It's now a 2-1. to one. It should be a triple. Can't believe this hasn't been captured. There we go. Fake champions on it. Trust Grandfa Grandfather Nurgle to get things done. Still some stuff resisting the east side. Told you to keep it capped, says Drog. Yeah, well, it's easier said than done, buddy, I think. There's the double. It should be a triple. And red team, you must say, should have this game wrapped up. Should have it wrapped up. because Mainly because the blue team have no nukes left to use right now. But well, there's one from 4400. I obviously looked at the red after he dropped this. Did some good work, but it was mostly to Guardsmen, who will reinforce cheaply and quickly. So Blue Team will get a natural back, but then where do you push? Where's the Land Raider? Land Raider's mid, but it's pretty low. It might be worth pushing against it with the double knobs. It won't last long. It will have the Frag Assault to knock him back. Shotgun's also here. Lots of damage coming in from this Execution Lehman Rust, but I think they can tank that and get through. I mean, ouch, on these heretics. Executioners kick some serious ass against infantry. Great and clean ones at around about half hit points. He was a bit more careful with those heretics, could be using them to worship right now. 75 to 59. Are the knob squads going east? I think they are. They're going to the least resisted side, which I guess is smart. Just thinking maybe they could have put, they could have taken out the land raider there. But they can't see what I can see. Grand Clemon being warped out of trouble by the sorcerer. Knob squad piling through to the east side. Running out of time though are the blue team. VPs are evened up now. Some fire dragons on the tip on the on the blue team now for droll cats. And uh, those guys are awesome. Can sprint in and mess up your vehicles pretty badly. Here's the Raptors jumping in to a whole lot of death. Not sure that was the smartest thing. 4400 has done that throughout the game, I feel like. Sending his units in alone here and there. 
It's not the most efficient thing to do generally. Down goes the shrine, which was suppressing the knobs and pissing them off. Oh, here's some chosen plague marines. Good anti-infantry unit, but they're not going to stand against a knob squad, let alone two. Exploding on death, but um, they're going to be forced off. Can the knobs now get on a land radar? We need to turn around, fellas. Here we go. 51 to 47. Oh, they're having to fight a zombie knob there. That was pretty cool. Lightning Claw Terminators are here. Support moving in now. Fire Dragons getting some shots on those Terminators and doing some good damage, as you can see. See it Council piling in. Wow. That's a hell of a lot of damage to these Terminators. Knob Squad now going in on the Land Raider. Use the choppers is up. Frenzy used. Hard Boys also. Heavy melee headbutts. Down goes the Land Raider. Should have probably moved it mid as soon as he knew those knobs were there but obviously he wanted to keep it here to contest the point I think it's I think it's more worthwhile to keep it safe in the mid for now even if it wasn't contesting this side Lightning Claw Terminator is taking a hell of a lot of damage having to teleport away still lots of red stuff in the mid though 51 to 30 2 to 1 now for blue right back in this game these fire dragons doing really well for Drollcat and an ob squad getting the job done on the land raider. Land raider was just taken to them. It was pretty safe in the mid. And was driven up to the knob so they could kill it. Great, great and King one now on the way for Pontius. Hitting the field in fact. We have Thorcart dropping another turret forward here. Which is a pretty good place to put it I think. Marines being dropped in. This is a dead Grand Tree one yet. One to one cap now. Red team desperately trying to get the east side back. I thought the red team had this game. They have general they have definitely lost a bunch of stuff here in these closing stages. Blue team playing it pretty well so far. There's a singularity. Is it gonna fire in time to stop the cap? It should. Oh, it's gonna be so close, it does just in time. That was very close. And now Blaster's getting shots in as you can see. Doing some chunks, especially if those guys blob up as they are. Look at this. Wow. They're going to kill him. Easily kill him. Single cap for blue. I think they have this game and I should really stop. Announcing winners before I know. Because I don't know what I'm talking about, obviously. Oh, it's a no cap game right now. Blue team surely have it. They can cap their natural cap to east side for a second. And that's it. Here we go. And there it is. And what a game. Uh, that is a real back and forth. Well done. Well done, Blue Team. A level 9 Chaos Sorcerer here. Did have the Siege of the Rift at the end. Level 10. What? It was level 10 for so long, this guy. He really did get stuck in, in true orky fashion. Well done, Simon. Drollcat with a level 9 Warlock. I think he stayed very solid throughout the game. Matthias as a Force Commander started very strongly. And did have some powerful stuff, but losing those land raiders. I mean, well, it's tough, right? Whenever someone loses a large vehicle, it always, it always looks like it's a misplay, but... It's just hard to prevent sometimes in the 3v3. Level 10 Lord General 2, and a level 7 Plague Champion. With Plague Fist at the end. There you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.